Okay, it's two minutes uh, after. Uh, I think we can start uh, now. Konishiwa. Uh, yeah, that is uh, greetings uh, in Japanese to everyone in the room and to those uh, who have joined us uh, online and those following uh, us through the regional hubs. So welcome to workshop number 311, Global Digital Value Chain, Africa Status and Way Forward. Uh, this workshop is being put together by the Africa ICT Alliance, AFICTA, and is happening at the 18th Internet Governance Forum taking place here in Kyoto, Japan. With the theme, Internet we want, the Internet we want, empowering all people. And uh, this particular workshop is under the sub-theme of Digital Divides and Inclusion. My name is Jimson Olufuye. I have the privilege of being the chair of the advisory council of Africa City Alliance, AFICTA. Uh, talking about AFICTA, AFICTA is a concerned private sector-led alliance of ICT association, companies, and individual IT professionals in Africa, founded in uh, 2012 with six country membership, but now in more than uh, 40 countries in Africa. Our vision is to fulfill the promise of the digital age for everyone in Africa. And in doing so, we collaborate with the AU, UNECA, African government, especially the government of the Arab Republic of uh, Egypt, and the, through ATSA, and uh, also through the Ministry of Communication, Innovation, and Digital Economy in Nigeria. In the spirit of multi-stakeholder engagement, which is the bedrock of Internet Governance Forum, as outlined in the Tunis Agenda of the World Summit on Information Society 2005. So we want to thank all our stakeholders for connecting and working with us thus far. The chair of AFICTA will be talking more uh, during his uh, opening uh, remark. So, but one of the positive things that came out of this uh, WISIS and internet governance is AFICTA, indeed. And uh, on the chat room, we can get a link to our website to know more about uh, AFICTA. Well, for my day job, uh, I'm the principal consultant at Contemporary Consulting, it's an IT firm based in uh, Abuja. And we work on data center, mitigate cyber security issues, provide cloud computing solution, online workflow research. We do a lot of research. So I'll be your on-site moderator for this workshop. Uh, we have also online moderator, and uh, that is Istaiye Kemabunta. Istaiye Kemabunta uh, is the national coordinator of uh, AFICTA, and is also the CEO of TechLaw. Uh, Mr. Kemabunta, are you there? Please say hello if you are there. Hello, yes, I'm here. Good morning and good evening. <laughs> good afternoon, well, wherever you are joining us from. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Kemabunta. And uh, we also have, speaking in this panel, as I mentioned, the chair of uh, AFICTA, Mr. Tabo Masigwani, the former president, Institute of IT Professionals of South Africa be giving his opening uh, remark. We have a very rich panel, uh, very rich panel indeed, of uh, on-site and online uh, speakers. Uh, in no particular order, uh, as I introduce them, though they will also talk more about what they do as they intervene. Uh, I have Mr. Bimbo Abioi, uh, is the president of the Institute of Software Partitioners of Nigeria and the group MD, FinTrack Software, Nigeria Limited, representing the private sector. We also have Dr. Kosi uh, Amesino, Amesino, Chief of World Bank Division in the Ministry of Economic and uh, Finance of Benin Republic. Dr. Kosi, you go. Yeah, Dr. Kosi is there. 
Uh, is Mr. Bimbo there online? Yes, I'm here. Good oh, morning. Good oh, morning. Great. Oh, good day. All right. Then uh, we have Professor uh, Yuan Kuleza uh, representing academia in, in Europe. Uh, Professor Yuan, are you in the house? Sorry, yes, I am. Looking forward to the panel. Thank you for oh, having Oh, great. Me. Then we, we have uh, with us here the Amazon of IT governance, internet governance in Nigeria, Mrs. Uh, Mary Uduma, who is also the coordinator of the West African IGF, representing the civil society. Mrs. Mary Uduma. Okay. And uh, Dr. Melissa Sassi. Dr. Melissa Sassi, uh, representing the private sector of North America. Are you in the house, Dr. Melissa? Yes, I am. Thank you for having me, and uh, thank you for representing us in, uh, in Kyoto. Oh, great. Thank you. Good to see you and hear your voice. Yeah, you too. You too. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Uh, next is Mr. Toyi Olonitero. The CEO of uh, DAPT, that is representing the private sector. Mr. Toyin, are you in, in the room? Yes, yes, I'm with you. Good morning from Nigeria okay. and good afternoon from uh, and uh, afternoon and evening from elsewhere. Since we are coming, we are talking from different locations, but it's morning, very early morning in Nigeria now. It's a pleasure to be with you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And next is Miss Jane Coven. This is Joe Jane Covey representing the technical community, North America. Jane, are you in the room? Okay, uh, actually, uh, Jane will, is in a session now and she will join us uh, before the end of the program. Uh, the next is Miss uh, Rachel uh, Chitanda. This is Miss Rachel Chitanda, Executive Officer, Computer Society of Kenya, strong member of AFICTA. From private sector. Uh, Ms. Rachel, are you in the room? Yes, yes. Good morning and uh, good evening to everyone. Uh, it's nice to be here. Looking forward to the conversation. Okay, great to see you. And next is uh, Dr. Ben Ewa. Dr. Ben Ewa is the acting director e government at uh, the National. Information Technology Development Agency of Nigeria representing the government. Dr. Bain. Thank you very much. Nice to meet you all. Okay, and also uh, we have uh, one of our distinguished guests, uh, Senator Afolabi Salesu. I don't know if he's around. Maybe he will join us uh, uh, because of the program. Is the chairman Senate Committee on ICT and uh, Cybercrime uh, in the National Assembly of Nigeria, representing the Parliament. So this is how it's going to go. Uh, each speaker will have uh, let's say about three minutes to speak. For the two rounds, we're going to go through of policy questions, of the of covering about 60 minutes. So we hope that uh, at the end of the two rounds of discussion then uh, we can uh, take uh, input from the audience uh, and Q&A from the audience. So uh, the chair of AFICTA, uh, Mr. Tabo Azigwani, uh, please, uh, the floor is yours for your opening uh, remark. Thank you. Uh, much appreciated, Dr. Jimson. Uh, and good morning to everyone who is in Africa and uh, Kunishiwa for those in uh, in Kyoto. I just learned the new word. Uh, we have to continually learn uh, as we go along. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, there is an old adage that says, if you are not on the, on the agenda, you become part of the menu. And I think this actually speaks a lot to a, a discussion we're gonna have today uh, where Africa is poised to become one of the most populated uh, continent with youngsters in, into the next 30 to 50 years. And we will see ourselves in a scenario where 
each individual has on average about four devices. But however, what we see here is the issue of more on the consumption side. And we have to ask ourselves the question of how do we then transition from a consumption-based economy into being more of producers and manufacturers? And we have to ask ourselves as we continue whether as Africa will we be able to to accomplish the sustainable development goals with only a, a, a consumption-based economy. We need to ask ourselves, what then are the low-hanging fruits in transitioning from being consumption-based into being largely a, a, a producer? Of course, the, of course, there's many uh, approaches to this one being that you can do a big bang approach we know practically it's interesting to do that but perhaps we need to to have a roadmap that starts with capacity development right into establishing production facilities in in africa and having uh, africa to, to 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 participate and partake in this in this value chains of um, uh, 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 digital. Ladies and gentlemen, I think uh, there will be a lot of expert uh, discussion uh, going into the panel and I don't want to, to take a lot of time. Let's, let's just, just give a, a round of applause to our panel uh, who will give us an expert opinion on this topic. I thank you. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Chair. Uh, and in fact, all the panelists, because you have to wake up very early, uh, I think in Nigeria it's uh, about uh, past 5 a.m. and in some other places around midnight, so we really appreciate your sacrifice and commitment. Thank you, Chair, for that uh, direction. I will now yield to uh, my colleague, uh, moderator, uh, the online uh, angle, Mr. Ye Kemabunta, for the next item on the agenda. Mr. E. Kemabunta, please. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Jimson. I um, have the honor to speak briefly on the workshop, but incidentally, um, when the chairman of AFICTA, Tabo, spoke, he did an excellent job in explaining what has brought us to this workshop, actually. So I run the risk of repeating him, so I'm going to be a bit careful. And your own introductions to give a hint as to where we're headed. So the workshop has been thought through and put together to help stakeholders, as it were, discuss the issues surrounding the global digital value chain as the chain affects Africa. Africa is a repository of several minerals that aid manufacturing of uh, certain kinds of infrastructure for the internet. Africa has human, therefore, has human resources and material resources, but it does appear that um, it hasn't really achieved essential retention of the value chain. So what has gone wrong? We're going to be talking about it, looking at it, and I want to make it a bit balanced since we're discussing inclusivity here. Is Africa really included deliberately in the process? Answer may be yes, or maybe maybe not quite. I can't foretell. The panelists will have a go at it and explain how Africa can get more of the value chain. Would there need to be some concessions to Africa? Would Africa need to step up its policy development? These are issues that will come up this, uh, this workshop, looking at value retention and um, having not to be a consumer continent all, all through, but also taking advantage of its own resources, especially material that are abundant really in Africa. How can those be exploited, explored and exploited to help Africa take its place in an inclusive process of internet governance forum. So that's essentially 
where we're here. We'll be putting questions to the panelists who are professionals in their own right. Unfortunately, the, the time doesn't allow for the deep dive by every speaker. So we'll ask that the speakers go straight to the point, be brief, cover the grounds in just about three minutes. We're going to have two rounds of the discussion. So that's essentially what we're here for, what the workshop is about. Thank you, Jimson. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Kimabunta, for putting it uh, very clearly. I uh, also have no doubt that uh, our panelists will do justice to the subject. Uh, but before we go ahead, I'll just uh, recognize uh, the director in charge of uh, technology and innovation at uh, the UNECA, that's Dr. Maktasek. Dr. Maktasek, you're welcome. Uh, again, welcome to everyone. Uh, now to the policy questions. We just have two policy questions. Uh, I will take one, then uh, Mr. E will uh, take the second one, and all our speakers will take it one after the other, as uh, earlier mentioned. Um, this first policy question has two parts. Uh, so we just encourage uh, panelists to respond to them in succession. Uh, considering that Africa is rated as a continent with the least contribution to the global digital value chain, as evident through the dilemma experienced in the advent of the COVID-19. So A, how inclusive is the global digital value chain? And as a concerned stakeholder, what are the initiatives or actions required to take, the action we require to take to amend the abnormal scenario? And the follow-up to that, which is the second part of this first question, is uh, kindly identify soft areas through which Africa could penetrate the global digital value chain and the benefits the continent uh, will derive. And so I'm going to uh, invite uh, Mr. Bimbo Abioi, the group MD of FinTrack, uh, for the for your submission, Mr. Bimbo. Sorry, he, he needs to have his video and microphone turned down. It's Would the host microphone. please assist? Okay, great. There he is. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you everyone, the moderators, the audience, everywhere we are uh, in any part of the world. Yes, uh, as has been. I don't know why you guys. Am I had? Go ahead. We can hear you. Proceed. Okay. Thanks. Yes, from the uh, global digital chain, we are talking about the creation and production, distribution, consumption, and ownership of digital content and platforms. And uh, when you look at all the ecosystem from maybe core banking, enterprise uh, solutions, to payment processing and fintech, uh, to cyber security research and development, uh, to cryptocurrency, to digital marketing and advertising, video streaming now, and what have you. Cloud computing and infrastructure. It is uh, very evident and clear that Africa is nowhere on the map. Uh, maybe a lot of presence on the content creation uh, is some climate. And also maybe in FinTech, uh, we are also into consumption and creation but definitely not ownership. Uh, so Africa as a continent is already on a super highway to becoming a digital slave in the ecosystem, which is very, very unfortunate. What can we do? Unfortunately, it's like everything is really getting cast now, uh, but it's not too late to still make some changes 
Uh, the problem with Africa is Africa itself. Um, I wish there are things um, other parts of the world can do to help Africa. I think they are doing their bit, uh, but even in their attempts to help, uh, ownership is taken away. We have some unicorns in uh, on the African continent today, but all our unicorns have been sold uh, because there is no supportive uh, environment in Africa, even for African businesses. Uh, so what can we do differently? Uh, we need to up our games on policy and regulatory frameworks. And we need to up our games on capacity building and skill development. We need to up our games on research and development. These areas we are lagging behind. Access to finance is another very big area that we need to help in. Uh, unfortunately for us in Africa, even the way we value things, we look too much into the past and the present, and that puts us at a disadvantage. Um, funding organizations that are uh, digital-minded, they are looking more at the future. Oh, this, com this company is struggling now. If I pull this, this, this form, it will enable it to do this, that, 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 that will enhance value. But we are, we are fixated by what the company has been able to do and what it's doing now uh, as a prison to look at its future. So these things have to radically shift and government across Africa I've got to also get involved in enabling access to finance. Without finance, there can't be much uh, impact in development. And of course, infrastructure development is another very critical area that governments across Africa have to play very clear roles. Access to infrastructure like roads, ports, utilities, power, the cost of doing business in Africa is very, very high. And uh, it puts us at a disadvantage. Uh, if all this can be done, um, Africa will take its place in the digital ecosystem. Thank you very much, Mr. Amatrejo. Mm, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Abiri. Uh, as the president of uh, uh, ISPON, uh, it would be good to hear what ISPON uh, would do or how ISPON will respond even to this uh, subject uh, matter. Uh, thank you for all the points you have outlined. Uh, I will move to the next uh, speaker, and uh, that is uh, Dr. Kosi Amasino. Dr. Kosi. Thank you, Chairman. I thank also Africa for inviting me. It's our third time now making workshop together. <laughs> okay. We are often ahead some experts saying every time that Africa is no longer seen like land of consumption. Africa is the land of consumption of digital, digital coming from another place. But it's important to know that that position are changing now. That position are very changing. We, since COVID-19 time, we have some collective awareness that must encourage and also energized for us in Africa. The vulnerability of digital technology is not possible if we don't have massive investment in digital infrastructure. Several African governments understood that today. When we see in our area, in West Africa, for example, in Benin, 
private, we know that private sector cannot invest in the area where profitability of their investment is not very clearly for short and middle term now. Government now in our area, including Benin, we offer private sector several opportunity. We provide subsidy with a framework of transparency call of trend. When we need to put some specific infrastructure somewhere, for example, we need to have broadband in rural area. We call private sector people and tell them how kind of investment you need to do this job. And we provide them subsidy to support the gap of the resource. It's important for us today to constat that it's important to have new approach for investment of in, in the infrastructure area in Africa. We have one approach called methodology of synergy, inter-network synergy. This approach means we're supposed to take into account that methodology when we are designing project, when we are planning, when we are deploying, when we are maintaining uh, maintain the infrastructure we're supposed to do in telecommunication area, in electricity area, in transport providing area. When we have, for example, teleco it, we have a project to build the road. We know that we need to make more action in the, that area to less pass also the network of telecommunication, the network of water, the network of electricity. When we take this into account and discuss more with private sector, also government, and see how we can help together, we reduce the cost of investment of projects. We have also some challenge in our area. What is data? We need data center and internet exchange points. But when we build data center and internet the change point is for one resort. We're supposed to have our data, our internet traffic locally. Internet is good, but if I want to call somebody in the same country with me and I use internet bandwidth, it's not profitable. It's very really good for us to have our local network usable. If I call something, somebody in the same area, it will, the cost will be very low for me. Another point is our regulation today. How can we regulate the digital sector in our region? More time, we understand internet service providers say, the cost is high. We don't take more investment to provide service for our client. Today, for example, in Benin, we have the lessons by, by, by city. The people who have their internet service provider can receive now the lessons by city build their network and provide service. That is, make the, low, the price very low for people who will need that internet service. We have also the challenge of literacy, digital literacy. We can make some people outside the internet today. 
it's important for us to teach people, to let them know what is internet and use that internet in ethical area. Because we know, we understand cybersecurity, cybersecurity, we can work on it by awareness. Thank you, Chairman. Excellent, excellent. That is from the government perspective. A lot of work you are already doing there. Uh, well, we still take all the input. Let me turn to Professor Kulesa, uh, Joanna Kulesa. Uh, please, you have the mic. is muted. The mic is muted. Yes, indeed, I did unmute it right now. Thank you so much. Um, I uh, am thrilled to join the uh, AFICTA panel again. Thank you for having me. I have been listening in on the discussion with much attention, and I do hope to be able to contribute with a case study that might address the concerns that were mentioned by previous speakers. So I do note um, that there is a need for a um, comprehensive, well-aligned regulatory framework, looking at the challenge that has been addressed somewhat from the outside. I welcome the observations from the insiders as the case study I would like to put on the um, table for discussion uh, does reflect those concerns. I also note the need for coordinated capacity building and the reliance on infrastructures as offered by non-African companies. Now, uh, having consulted with the organizers, please let me propose one case study, one suggestion here that uh, might be of interest during this IGF meeting. There have been quite a few sessions organized around new developing internet infrastructures that are allowing connectivity, particularly in underserved regions and in developing countries. In this context, it might be useful for us to look into the policy challenge or the location of those specific services in the global value chain with a due regard to Africa. Now, the picture you see on your screens is the availability of SpaceX, a non-African company, uh, and its services to regions in Africa, in developing countries, particularly in those which are challenged when it comes to connectivity. I would like to propose this discussion in the context of sustainable development goals. The overarching purpose is to ensure that the next billion is connected and that connection is stable, secure, and offered in a sustainable manner. When we look at the specific development in the global value chain, we would note that there is a rapid rise both in demand and in supply when it comes to these developing, not so novel, but rapidly developing technologies. Just recently, at the beginning of this year, SpaceX announced that it will start operation in Nigeria. Now, it might be relevant for us to question how that operation is going to function, how the sustainable development goals will be achieved with a non-African company offering that service with uh, uh, governmental support to individual end users. Now, I believe that a recently completed project supported by the Internet Society Foundation on that specific purpose offers a few suggestions. You will find more information here. I do not wish to take up too much time, but if you were seeking recommendations for both policy and civil society engagement into the specific um, components of the global value chain, do consider clicking on the link at the address given above. Uh, the report 
presented for the Internet Society Foundation within its Decolonizing the Internet theme looks at various policy aspects of low Earth orbit satellites, including the services offered by the company headed by Mr. Musk. I will refrain here from highlighting specific cases where these policy, policy issues have recently become relevant. But it is not just connecting the next billion of users, but it is also ensuring access in, tar in times of conflict or internal turmoil, just to mention the war in Ukraine or the situation in Iran. So if developing countries, we call them non-spacefaring nations, those who do not yet have access to space technologies, wish to develop their policies and inform civil society in a consistent manner, allowing them to reach for that low hanging fruit of technology that is already being offered slowly to African states, they might consider raising awareness around, around the regulatory landscape of broadband satellite technologies. Just very briefly, the landscape might not be as simple as one might think. So when we do consider broadband internet access, it is not just national regulation. One could go even as far as to say that national regulation might not be sufficient. We would probably view that component of internet infrastructure from a broader perspective, and that would encompass both international law, national regulations, but also with us meeting here at the IGF, the policies developed in a multi-stakeholder manner. So when we look at that specific technologies, all of those components should be considered. On the website in the report, but also accompanying the report, you will find two cheat sheets. So ready-made documents with questions that both the governments and civil society respectively might wish to answer before they allow a private company offering these specific services. Now I've put on a slide here simply the questions for civil society, ensuring that we would have their representation here in the room. But there is a dedicated policy, cheat sheet policy report also for governments. We do consider internet access a human right. And when a new technology comes and offers internet access to those who have been behind the digital divide, the government is quick to act to make sure that the citizens are satisfied and actually do have connectivity. But questions to be asked include those around jurisdiction, include those around security, who owns this equipment, who has access there to, who may decide to switch it off in times of conflict, as you might have observed recently over Ukraine. Finally, a vital component that was already mentioned by one of the previous speakers is data. When these new fundamental technologies are introduced into a jurisdiction, both civil society and governments should ask questions about data, the content of data collected, the access thereto, and the processing rights. Again, we've been asked to speak simply for three minutes as an introduction, so I will leave you with this slide. But just to summarize, if you're looking to address this specific challenge, which is fundamental to connectivity in the region, do consider following or actively participating in the World Radio Conference happening later this year, where these considerations will be discussed, maybe not in a multi-stakeholder model, but with a particular focus on governments, and informed input from all stakeholders in a multi-stakeholder manner will, however, allow also African countries to take an active step towards ensuing sustainable development and sustainable internet access. I'll stop here for the sake of time. There is more at the link provided, and I am always happy to answer questions and looking forward to the second part of the panel. Thank you again for having me. Thank you very much, uh, Prof. Uh, it's like you, you are saying that uh, the government has a lot to do with regard to 
ensuring that uh, there is greater participation of Africa in the digital uh, value chain. And uh, in terms of participating in the ITU, you know, ITU is a treaty making organization, treaty making organization, but uh, we we'll just use the opportunity to recognize that indeed uh, most countries are encouraged to attend uh, such event through multi stakeholder delegation, wherein the private sector, the civil society, and all relevant uh, stakeholders are so part of the country team. Thank you very much for highlighting that. Uh, let me now turn to Ms. Mary Uduma, uh, speaking from the civil society perspective. Madam Mary Uduma. Madam Mary. Thank you. Um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are connecting. Uh, and uh, thank you for being in this session. And um, um, from, my, from my own perspective, um, my name is Mary Udum, as we said. Um, I coordinate the West Africa Internet Governance Forum. And um, in looking at the, the, the Africa, Africa's uh, um, um, participation and um, uh, in the process of the global G G GDVC, the global digital value com uh, co co compact. Sorry, digital global value chain. I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry. So, uh, for us, from the grassroots, from the grassroots, we 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 try to make sure that we, we are participating. Uh, in our own in our own little way and um, raising these issues at the IGF whenever we organize our national IGF or our regional IGF and most so we are also interested in how uh, this new process new pro uh, program affect the human rights and uh, we talked about the the uh, the, uh, the pandemic area you now you now saw that uh, we were only dependent on uh, the um, uh, other people from outside Africa to help us, even the one we developed with, within Africa, we were not able to, it, it didn't go far. But the fact is that we need to uh, consciously, intentionally um, develop um, whom, um, would I call it um, <laughs> engaging the engagement of and advocacy for participation of uh, Africans in this um, value chain. And also developing our young people, developing our, our business people in particular, because our business people are not participating a lot in the process. So, and also making sure that um, um, our voices are not only heard, but we also, uh, be part of it, but I want to say uh, I want to raise one issue that Africa has done. One is the Empesa and the and the fintech area. When we are with uh, Empesa started from uh, from uh, um, from uh, 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 Kenya and uh, other people, other uh, uh, other countries and the regions are adopting that and so that is one of the contributions I, I can see and uh, you can see that fintech is booming in our especially in Nigeria and we can see um, Jumia or Conga you know people doing e-commerce so those are where I think we are participating or we are contributing so that's for me uh, where I could say that the business sector is doing. But come to human rights, we want standards. We want to be protected. Our data that is being gathered, we want it to be protected. So, um, so we, are, we are trying to, we would try as much as po possible to provide advocacy for, 
for uh, data protection and uh, safety of our data. We're also concerned about where this data, where they are uh, housed. Okay, so uh, we should also be part of, let's, let's see whether we can house our data within our co continent and not depending on everything uh, on the cloud. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Uh, that's very good. <coughs> we are actually participating uh, one way or the other, but we need to do more. Thank you very much. Uh, I will turn now to Dr. Melissa, Dr. Melissa Sassi, Air Sector North America. Dr. Sassi, please. Excellent. Can you hear me okay? Okay, super. You can hear me all right, correct? Yes, yes a little more volume. Volume. Okay, perfect. Um, all right, so I'm going to quickly, um, I'm Dr. Melissa Sassi, and I'm a venture partner at uh, Machine Lab Ventures. So my whole world uh, revolves around, um, you know, uh, enabling tech entrepreneurs to build their businesses, scale their businesses, and, you know, potentially exit, depending upon the scenario. And I I've spent a lot of time in, um, you know, kind of digital skill building. So I kind of take this um, intervention and look at it from the perspective of technology entrepreneurship um, and promoting a, a culture of digital innovation and financial well-being. And why do I take it from this perspective? Um, you know, it's about making, you know, meaningful use of the technology in front of us and, you know, enabling skill building that drives outcomes meaningful and quick outcomes. So I'm gonna read some headlines. It's a bit doom and gloom, but also um, you know, a bit inspiring as well. Accelerating the use of digital technologies is key to creating productive jobs and boosting economic growth in Africa. Middle East and North Africa addressing highest rate of unemployment in the world. Entrepreneurship is critical to Africa's transformation. Why Africa's youth hold the key to its development potential. Youth entrepreneurs will define the future. So on and so forth, all right? And people are the ultimate resource in economic development. Without people, what do we have? So what do I see as entrepreneurship culture or entrepreneur culture? It's about promoting a, a, a culture of innovation tech innovation and financial stability. Highly scalable programs geared toward transforming youth and young people into change makers, influential leaders in their own communities. Skill building models that create youth with, you know, that are created with youth at the center. Powering them to access training that inspires students to share their experience, young people to share their experiences with their peers, not even necessarily through formal education, often in organic ways. It's about culture, it's about skills, it's about tools. It's about being practical, engaging, interactive, fun, and gamified. This is only possible through train the trainer initiatives, clubs, learning and while doing and collaborating, measuring impact and scaling it. A perfect way to do this is leveraging where youth already are, university settings, for example, breathing the fire of entrepreneurship into every single classroom and campus, which enables it to build the scale or built, it enables it to be built for scale. Something like this, a campaign where you choose in one university as a pilot, 100 students, 50 students that spend time over a, a short period of time to learn a number of different tools, growth mindset, entrepreneurship skills. And then they go out and share it in each and every faculty with sponsors from each faculty and those administrators that support the university as a whole. Enabling them to grow and shine so that it's not just about them going and learning, they're practically creating things using the tools in front of them every single month. And then they have a capstone project. Again, 
practical stuff. Not memorizing, memorizing things, not theoretical things, real stuff. Measuring it and scaling it and rolling it, rolling it out to each and every university. So when I think about growth mindset, these are kind of things I think about. It's being able to tell stories, to bring our, our, our stuff to life, our origin stories, having a passion for lifelong learning, knowing how to fail and be perfect, not be perfect, knowing how to motivate ourselves, be resilient and have perseverance, so on and so forth. Entrepreneurial thinking, knowing how to manage our money, make money, knowing where taxation comes from, knowing how to build partnerships, knowing how to pitch, how to understand our audience, how to know when you've got a product that people want and they're willing to pay for it, knowing how to solve problems and think critically. These are examples of tools for entrepreneurs. Notice I haven't put, let's all go out and learn to code. It's real practical stuff. And I, I just put these examples and it's not about saying, you know, let's use examples that already exist. Let's look at local tools that can either be developed or are already developed. Design thinking and agile. All right, um, I'd love to uh, engage anyone if they're interested. I'm easy to find, Dr. Melissa Sassy. Thank you. Thank you very, very much, uh, Dr. M uh, Melissa Sassi. Culture of innovation, uh, scaling up capacity, and uh, skills, being practical, being engaging. Thank you so much for that uh, perspective. In fact, uh, as a matter of fact, in Nigeria, the, we have a new minister that has come up with a strategy focus on the developing the talent and capacity of uh, about five million uh, youths. So you are quite right on point. Uh, thank you. All right, well, I know exactly who I'm calling tomorrow then. <laughs> okay, <laughs> sure. All right, uh, I will now uh, turn to Mr. Tui Oloni Teru, private sector, to please uh, come forward with this uh, perspective. Thank you. Tony, are you there? Okay, maybe while we wait for Tony to come up, uh, I'll move to Ms. Uh, Rachel Shitanda, uh, Executive Officer, Co Computer Society of Kenya. Uh, Rachel, are you there? Yes, yes. Okay, Hello. please, go ahead. You have your three minutes. Oh, so thank you so much for the opportunity and thank you everyone for joining in. I think um, uh, I have to introduce myself. My name is Rachel Shitanda. I'm a senior executive member for Computer Society of Kenya. I'm also a head of product for Mentalist. I lead team of developers and, uh, and techies when it comes to product development and strategic uh, outlook towards uh, products and startup. So I, my approach and my view towards this uh, problem of today is more of us as Africa looking towards our own capacity as, as, a, as a continent and what we as ourselves can use, can leverage to, to solve our own pro, pro, problem when it comes to digital and inclusivity and also when it comes to to economic development, so it is a it's it's common it's a it's a common fact for everyone who is here that Africa has really enjoyed and and uh, experienced a very increased uh, connectivity and uh, accessibility to internet and penetration of internet in in the continent for the past two decades, and so Africa is uh, one of the of the markets which is attracting a lot of startups. And uh, one of the biggest thing that we have to focus as Africa is how we making our own, our own solutions. Are we leveraging also for, from that uptake to build our own economies? So, so the, the, the main focus here is the governments to, to really put a strategy around encouraging local talent and local homemade products to be developed. As from the previous speakers who have uh, already spoken before me, they have spoke about, uh, Mr. Bimbo has spoken about financing infrastructure and reduction of uh, 
cost of business, which primarily is focused around government policies uh, in terms of uh, business uptake. And so if we have, if, if we provide a very favorable environment to startups and also to individuals uh, in our communities um, to start business, then we will leverage to uh, leverage uh, on this change and this uptake of Africa as a very new market to in the world. Uh, we have also uh, heard from Dr. Kosis about uh, local network and how the government needs engagement uh, in order to provide uh, solutions and also better regulation policies. So I, I think uh, as a representative of the government, we, we can agree that it is a mutual responsibility and it falls a lot more on the government because as a government, it has a mandate to provide good policies, uh, employment opportunities, uh, stable uh, local currencies and uh, safeguarding their population. So I think it's a point for us is to get in the middle ground and focus on those issues that are really affecting us. Also, I, I, I am, as a, it's common knowledge and also what Dr. Melissa has spoken about, about high skill set and entrepreneurship mindset that should be developed within ourselves in order to leverage on this change and develop our continent, then we have to look at what is this uh, high skills and entrepreneurship mindset. What are we providing as a, as a continent in order to, to grow our entrepreneurial mindset? Are we providing finances? Are we growing our population in such a way that they, they, they focus on job creation? Uh, are we encouraging capital vent, uh, venture capitalism within our own? Like, are we building a capital investment within our own communities? Because it is, um, it's just, uh, it's sad that all, mo most of the startups that are brought up, even that are coming up in Africa, they are mostly funded by venture capitalism from, from the East and the West. And uh, uh, our own population of people that are able to either finance or uh, invest in such companies are not even aware or are not informed about opportunities that are around tech and uh, tech ecosystem and how they can leverage their income and grow their, their portfolios by investing in small startups within ourselves. So I think we should uh, really go into, into, it, into it deep and encourage our own population to invest within Africa by providing solutions around ourselves. So uh, uh, as, uh, I, as, I, I, as I conclude, I just want to focus more on us building solutions within ourselves. Uh, as Africa and also as policy makers that are, are in this forum, what, what environment are we building or are we creating around building uh, networks and also building uh, companies and encouraging other companies to come? What, uh, what are we also doing when it comes to employment and skills upgrading? What are we doing when it comes to regulation? What are we doing in our own capacity when it comes to consumption of products that have been developed in Africa? Uh, what are we doing as a private sector also to develop solution that we need because we actually understand what we need from our own content? What are we doing also as a, as a continent to safeguard our own data? Uh, what, what are those things that we're encouraging companies to invest and bring their data to, to Africa? Are we providing the enabling environment? Um, and so, and so as a community and also as a people stakeholders within this, uh, within this industry, we, yes. we need to focus on this. So thank you so much. Excellent. 
Uh, Rachel, very well put. We appreciate that intervention. I will turn now to uh, Tony. Uh, Mr. Tony Oloniteru, uh, you are back online now. Okay, please go ahead for your three minutes. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, just to be very quick, my own contribution is that we need to do uh, an unbiased uh, self appraiser of you know Africa and how we are doing because we seem to be over focused on the, um, the negative side and not able to you know appraise the positive side in terms of the progress that we have made so that we can see how we can quickly advance on that because a lot is happening in the, in the, in the continent for example like this Africa ICT Alliance that we have now, it wasn't there 30 years ago. So today, that shows that there's a progress that we're making. And I know a lot of things that we'll be doing for this African ICT Alliance uh, to change the dynamic of things. So we have to look at just a lot of business expansions that is taking place in Africa, just like MTN, came to Nigeria, Econet Wireless or came to Nigeria. I know a lot of Nigerian companies that are also going to other African countries, Kenya, just like our banking system have done. We have technology companies that are expanding to other African countries. So in the same way, we have a whole lot of things that are happening. For example, we have the DNS Africa now. We are right now, I as a Nigerian, as a fellow of the um, yeah, encryption associate council, mentoring a lot of other young Africans from Kenya, from Tanzania, from elsewhere in Africa. So a whole lot of things happening. We need to also recognize these things so that we can now see how those things can help in the transformation of the digital value chain for Africa in the medium to long term. For example, if I have met a lot of people now and I want to expand my businesses to other parts of Africa, this is my mentees definitely become part of the value chain process. I right now in our companies in Nigeria, I'm recruiting some of those people from other countries in Africa to work in Nigeria remotely. Vulnerability assessment, financial testing, creating jobs for them, making sure that they're part of the value systems, making sure that we are doing things so we need to point these things out. And what am I trying to say? We need to have behavioral modification in terms of change of attitude. And my recommendation is that we need to lay a lot of emphasis on crowdfunding and crowdsourcing. We look at Africa as a whole. We can, we can crowdfund Africa. If you have over 1 billion people, let us say we, we, we develop something. I would say people should subscribe to it at say, uh, $10 or $100, and you have uh, you, uh, you have 1 million people in the whole of Africa, let's say for technology development, how much would that be? If that funding is put there by Africans, then we can determine the utilization, maybe young people, new investments, new startups, that Africans will give this thing to Africans, rather than the funding coming from the East and the West, because if the business model and the design of the funding is from Western countries or from Eastern countries, I can bet you that they cannot design it without looking at how they're going to make return on investment. So we are undermining ourselves because we think that we are poor. We are looking at ourselves from a poverty point of view, which is wrong because there is a lot of capacity in terms of informal capacity. It will not be government and government and government only. That government will go also borrow from the West and be paying back. We can fund ourselves through crowdfunding, and we got to deliver the service also through crowdsourcing. If I want to have a solutions in Nigeria, why can't I get somebody from South Africa, somebody from this? And it has happened before, because look at all of us using Moodle and e-learning software now, whereas QNSGEN as one of the first e-learning software which are part of that NCC put four universities in Nigeria to learn other uh, uh, you know, telecommunication development for Africa, when telecommunication regulations first comes into being, was developed by the University of South Africa, and a copy of it was given to the University of Joss to use. So now, if instead of using QNSJ, so why do we now decide to go and use Moodle, those ones that were developed by Western countries, popularize it, and kill yours? 
So to me, we need a change of attitude, we need the right attitude, we need to look at the little, little progress that we have been making, rely on crowdfunding and crowdsourcing and African solutions to African problems, including manufacturing of hardware, which is also happening in Nigeria. I know one of our directors in NIDA, Dr. Agu, is doing a lot, mechatronics, at a village in Abuja, um, uh, Kujie. You can go there, so things are happening. So why can't you patronize? Instead of patronizing it, for the government to go and patronize product from outside Africa, and they will keep on complaining and complaining. If it's going to create jobs, it's creating jobs in Lubedia, not even in the city center, in the remote area. Well, so this will be my immediate contribution for now, that crowdfunding and, and, and crowdsourcing and the right attitude to look at the positive side of what we can do. Thank you. Very well made. Very well made. You need to look inwards. Excellent. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chief Tui Loniteru. Uh, let me now turn on to Dr. Benewa, uh, Linda. You can say that uh, Nida is also one of the outcome of wishes one way or the other. Uh, Dr. Benewa. Thank you very much. One of the benefits of speaking last is that you get to summarize all the ideas that have been made by previous speakers. You know, and, um, and I must say that I quite agree with every view that has been expressed here. Um, uh, by way of uh, introduction, yes, I work for the National Information Technology Development Agency, uh, where we intervene through regulations. As I said during the session on uh, gov uh, data governance and trust yesterday, we are beginning to see uh, reg regulatory interventions that are more market-facing, you know, less risk adverse, um, designed to uh, trigger new markets. Um, and, and so the issues that have been t talked about here, what are, uh, have to do with infrastructure, or the quality of infrastructures. I mean, in the last decades, uh, entrepreneurs from Nigeria, for instance, have ventured into uh, assembly of um, computer devices, you know. Um, where they, uh, they have made enormous um, uh, gains, but we also see how they have struggled in the market. So we are also responding with and uh, trying to uh, you know uh, bring our regulations and enhance the quality of um, device components and so on, and also improve the the, ex the customer experience. But I will talk um, also about some of some other things I, I do uh, um, in addition to. Uh, w regulations, and that would also uh, to resonate with some of the um, contributions from others, because in particular um, the tech entrepreneurship and so on. If you take a very close look at the the existing African market, if you, and then we need to be interested in um, the structure of the labor market, You're right? Um, where a large Proportion of the, of, the, of the of the economies in the informal sector. You know, if we are serious about tech adoption, we must be uh, uh, also interested in understanding where our needs are, what the structure is now, and how technology can impact on the on, on the existing structure. Right, and for instance, we we consume a lot of of, of goods that are unstructured low quality, but which a, a, a huge uh, percentage of our population rely on on a daily basis. Right. So about two years ago, I started working on, on, on that, and uh, currently we've su su uh, successfully created a digital platform where virtually every service, including hair braiding and all that can be structured. And one of the interesting uh, takeaways from that is, is that these traditional services can be digitalized. We are seeing uh, you know, a, a connection right, where a, a carpentry uh, worker can use digital platforms you know, to, you know, to enhance markets and so on. So my point is that we need to look at where the majority of our population need interventions. Right, that will be the, the low-hanging fruit for African markets, and, and so on. Thank you very much. 
Yeah, very good. Thank you very much, Dr. Bain. Uh, I would love to hear what NIDA is doing to empower those people as well. It's a good point you made, yes. okay? But we will come back to that. So maybe okay. your next round, you okay. talk about that. Right, uh, I, will, I will now yield to my colleague uh, online, uh, Mr. Yekema Bunta. Please pick it up. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Excellent session so far. I listened attentively to all the speakers and I was excited about the numerous suggestions that were coming forth. But Ben, who speaks for government at this workshop and has spoken last, I won't uh, let you go off too quickly. I'm going to, I won't let you speak last again, so you'll speak first. I have reversed the order and have you intervene right away. And I'm, I, I, I'm going to be talking to you about raw materials, but I define it broadly. I define raw materials to include human resources, actually. Mm -hmm. I also define raw materials to include existing African solutions that are there, but not harnessed for the benefit of Africa. So since, and by the way, before I ask my question directly to Ben, Dr. Belewa, it would be nice for government, as you represent, to be part of AFICTA, even if at not, not a membership level, but at affiliate level of some kind, so the interaction can be more robust. We will not be talking to ourselves. We'll have government engaging with us directly. So I'm appealing that you make this constant, since you represent the very powerful and important agency in Nigeria, the NIDDA, the Technology Development Agency. But that's an aside. <clears throat> So let, let's get to the question. We're home to resources, really. Africa is home to so much resources, human and natural. What went wrong that we are not able to convert those resources to enormous part of the value chain globally? Take, for instance, let, let's look at government. Has government of Nigeria, which you speak about, taking steps in what direction to ensure that those resources are used even for the benefit of the nation, as an example. So you go first, Dr. Ewa. Thank you very much. Yes, one minute. On, on the first part of the question uh, about membership of Africa, I'm already here, and I'm going to take this words back to my boss and uh, ensure that uh, NIDAC continues to participate and contribute um, effectively in this process. On the second part ab about uh, conversion or, or utilization of natural resources, you know, it, this is interesting because you know every age d d defines how or the value of natural resources. You know, we can talk you know, about what the the coal industry or steel meant some couple of decades ago to some economies including the advanced economies and what it is today but today we are also looking at new resources like data uh, right uh, and, and so on so i think the key thing for government is to recognize the transition you know in the uh, resource uh, utilization and how they can be effectively um, employed to uh, achieve um, uh, um, national uh, development. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. so Mr. Yee, uh, uh, just to bring it to your attention, we also have uh, another of our powerful uh, government agency representative in the house, uh, NCC. So uh, Dr. Chidi is, uh, is here, seated with us. So. Please, uh, I'm sure you want to Dr. also... Dr. Chidi you. from NCC, did yeah, you say? Ex exactly. The Nigerian the Communications Commission? Exactly. Yes. Oh, why don't you have his intervention for a minute at once? Since uh, government is speaking. The, the telecom sector is what he represents, and most of that are actually in foreign hands, as it were. So let's hear his own intervention. You have a minute, sir. Um, we're, we're talking about resources. Africa is home to natural resources for production. And I defined resources to include human resources. I, I, I defined it to be broad. Natural resources include human resources and also solutions that already exist. How has that fared in the telecom sector? <coughs> Are we contributing to the global value chain? 
as it were. Thank you. All right. Thank you very uh, much, the moderator. Uh, the, your question is very relevant. Human capacity development is very critical to as a raw material for the subject matter. As you may have gathered by now, uh, NCC is a major, in fact, the only sponsor of the Digital Bridge Institute in Nigeria. So Digital Bridge Institute is designed to upskill Nigerians when it comes to digital literacy. There are so many programs going on there, uh, like the Advanced Digital Appreciation course, and um, the programs that are designed to upskill public servants. Well, that is on a very um, high level. The NCC is very much keen to develop research and development, and that is why we have a full department dedicated for research and development. So we end our professor chair on Nigerian universities selected every year. Apart from that, we have research grants for universities you know, that you know, um, try to understand um, where we are in technology, in artificial intelligence, blockchain, virtual reality, autonomous systems, and so on and so forth. Um, I'm talking strictly as far as um, uh, the, the human capital development is concerned. Now, when it comes to the actual game, you know, uh, the players, I head the New Media and Information Security Department, and I have a program that I'm doing this year to identify startups. So I'm actually implementing the Nigerian Startup Act, which essentially requires that we upskill the youth to participate in the digital age creation of platforms, management of platforms, integration of platforms. So for want of time, I will not um, dwell so much on this. But the program is meant to have what you might call a roadshow, and then we identify uh, talents you know, amongst the Nigerian, the Nigerian youth. And then, but the ultimate goal is to fund them and then give them waivers for licenses for about five years to see how we can grow the market. As you may have gathered by now, Nigerian market is saturated. And the only way you can deal with saturated market is to create more players to meet up with the HHI index. Thank you very much. Excellent. Th thank you. Thank you, Dr. Chidi. Um, we'll, we'll move on. I, I assume that you have no position on what went wrong. Why is Africa not contributing significantly to the value chain digitally, really? So, um, but you're saying that there are prospects. We're making effort at this time. So, but thank you for that intervention. I also know that NCC that you work for has uh, a, a Nigerian content, a local content establishment as part of its own structure. So you're doing more work in having to mainstream local efforts into producing telecoms services. Thank you anyway. Dr. Jameson, do you want to make a comment? Yes, uh, just to uh, highlight that we just have 10 minutes. I don't know how we're going to manage it. Okay, maybe one more minute <laughs> intervention. So, so let's give Rachel a minute still. Rachel, I'm going in reverse order so more persons can contribute. Rachel, do you have a, a time to speak for a minute from Kenya? Is she still yeah, on the call? Yeah, I still sure. am. Uh, thank you so much for giving me another opportunity to, to talk and discuss about this topic. So. I think uh, one thing that I have to agree with uh, uh, Anne is, uh, is that one of the things that we are lacking as a continent is investing on our own. I think I had, I had earlier highlighted on the fact that we, we, we need to, to do a lot when it comes to funding. And uh, you know, like uh, as it has already been spoken about, data is a new gold and a lot of things that are in technology is a new wealth. So we, we also as a continent and uh, individuals around these sectors need to uh, encourage stakeholders that maybe are in manufacturing uh, the reach to, to increase their investment in uh, capital oh. ventures and uh, crowdsourcing and crowdfunding. So as a continent, maybe we can leverage in the fact that we are very new in uh, this age and we can invest a lot on our own, uptake of our own technology as well, 
developing solutions around ourselves to be a bit uh, independent of uh, of uh, others. So I I'm think sorry. that's if one thing that it is expired already. I really am sorry to interrupt you, but I wanted more persons to intervene. But you have stronger investment, and I take that as a, a contribution. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay, so Olutoyi, can you do in 30 seconds what you recommend? Already you That's have quite elaborate when you spoke it's, about recommendations. So let's go to Melissa. If okay. You know. We need we need we need um, we need the younger generation, we need to structure them, guide them to be focused because there's a lot of distraction. If somebody study material engineering, I actually don't want elaboration, them. go straight to the point, sir. We need to upscale that, their skills. That that, listen, listen to what I'm saying if you cut it at the 30 seconds. We're talking about manufacturing and production here. That is why I'm going there. If somebody study material engineering, let the person study up to higher level, up to PhD level, so that they can know how to convert mineral resources to something that we can use for production. Excellent. No, Excellent. Not somebody who study mechanical engineering going to become a sabbatical and accountant because you want to make money. Otherwise, we won't get there. We will not get there. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Melissa, are you still on the call? Yeah, of course, I'm here. Um, you know, I'm not going to take up a, a lot of time. I'll just quickly say that I think, um, you know, I, I come across the most innovative um, founders when I'm working on the continent. And I think sometimes we, um, you know, talk about the doom and gloom of what's wrong and um, not what's right. And I think um, when, when I spent time in, uh, in Cape Verde uh, in October, I spent a month there, I met some of the most amazing young people um, with the most amazing ideas. And okay. um, I think we need to move toward positive stories, more positive Great. stories. For global All right. Community. Thank you. Excellent. Positive stories should be highlighted more. So Mary, what uh, do you recommend? Let's change our curriculum and in bringing change up curriculum. our young people. Um, not uh, laying more emphasis on uh, certificates only, but um, bringing entrepreneurship in our curriculum and uh, developing them young. And I, I want us to hold uh, the business people responsible for the development, development of our youth, because if they give them opportunity to develop, they will be able to uh, contribute more. Okay, so, but you're not saying how we should get them in. That would be something we should think about. It's good to bring them, but how do we bring them in? Never mind, we'll think about it back home. But that's the way I look at it. How do we get the business people more included? It's a national question and a continental question. Thank you, Mary. Yeah. Jo Joanna, I only have a minute. Oh, I don't need a minute. I just wanted to say thank you for letting me about, be a part of this session. If uh, we were looking for one quick takeaway, I would probably piggyback right on Mary's comment on the need of capacity building, which is probably aligned with the funding. If we can manage to coordinate the funding to build the youth capacity, we are almost there. Thank you for having me. It's been a fruitful session and uh, I wish you all success. Thanks so much. Thank you too. Thank you. All of you are talking about capacity. It makes a lot of sense. So let, let's go to Dr. Kuf Kusi. You're there on site. Do you want to share, have my 30 seconds? Yeah, yes, th thank you. Capacity building is very important. We have a school, digital a school. Anything else? We've heard about that a lot more. Or do you have another idea about okay. <laughs> capacity building? <laughs> we, we, we have sun, for example. We have sun in Africa. We want to use solar technology to provide electricity for all our telecommunication infrastructure. That is exactly. very important. Exactly. Perfect. Yeah. So Africa should harness the solar energy for its own power. Okay, so do we then move to Bimbo, if you're still on the call? Yes, I, I hope you can hear me. Yes, and I do have just about a minute to the end of the session. Okay, so... I offer I take, you 30 seconds of it. I will take care of it. Yeah, um, at ISPOM, uh, we are putting together a memorandum to the uh, new uh, Honorable Minister uh, Federal Ministry of uh, Communication and Digital Economy. Uh, one, one of the key things there is to leverage existing capacities and existing solutions uh, that are already on the market. I, I, and I, I would say let's focus on solutions. We'll talk about capacity a lot. If you have an example of a solution that can be leveraged, existing oh, solution, yeah. just mention it. 
oh, like we, we have even in Nigeria, we have ERP that the government can leverage for its e-governance. Okay, we have uh, workflow solutions, we have document management solutions that can be leveraged. But oftentimes okay. we look out for solutions that is the bane of our problem. So we are going to bring this to the fore in our oh, engagement. All right. Thank you very much. Excellent, excellent closing. So let's return to Rafikta quickly in summary. So Afikta, it's listening to all this. It means we have to get back home to Africa and put together all of these thoughts and have a way to bring in the private sector and then also harness our own solutions that exist already in preference to foreign ones. That's what I hear. And then build the capacity of our young ones. So ladies and gentlemen, I thank you for the session. Uh, we okay. will now have uh, Dr. Jameson bring it to a close. Okay, so uh, we have about one minute. Uh, Jane, Jane, you, you're online. Uh, can you just say something within uh, 30 seconds, Jane? Jane, coffee? Jane? She's sharing us online. Oh, she's sharing us online. Thank you very much. So uh, on behalf of all of us in uh, Africa ICT Alliance, AFICTA, I wish to appreciate all our speakers and participants, both on site and online, uh, Africa Secretariat, and of course the technical team, the wonderful technical team. Can we put our hands together for this great technical team? Uh, big thanks to the government and the people of Japan for their overwhelming hospitality. Uh, Okiki Arigato. Thank you all very much. Itrashai. Itekimas. Have a good day and goodbye. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Thank you everyone. Thank you. Excellent. Yes.